It's been a while, I'm really sorry. I didn't expect to be gone for half a year, but here we are. I've just been a little bit busy, and I'll, t I'll talk about that at the end of the video. Don't worry if you're interested, I just we'll talk about it later. For now, I want to talk about what if Rudius never went to the beggared continent to save Zenith? What if he listened to Hitogami's advice and just stayed back? Well, we actually kind of do know a little bit about that future in a couple volumes from now. So this is very, very minor spoilers, but it's it's not really anything big. Hitogami does end up telling Rudius what would have happened, pretty much. And I want to go over those events and just talk about what happened uh, or what would have happened. And also, I kind of want to just speculate on my own kind of where things would have went from there, because we only know a very immediate effect of what would have happened. And... On what, you know, it is interesting all on its own, but I think that there's a further discussion to be had of what happens after that, uh, after they save Zenith and everything. Like, what's this other future going to have? And it's, I don't know, it's kind of a fun future. And I, <laughs> I want to see more of it, to be completely honest. But pretty much, the ones at the Beggard Continent saving Zenith right now are Paul, Lilia, Geese, Talon, and Roxy. Lilia obviously isn't, like, on the front line. She's injured. If it were, like, you know, six years ago, seven years ago, uh, Lilia, I think that she might actually have enough strength to do that. Uh, it's just while she was defending Princess Ariel, because she did actually work at the, uh, the Asura, like, castle or whatever... She injured herself, unfortunately, and she couldn't really do many, uh, like, proper duties, but duty. <laughs> I'm mature. But uh, ever since then, she got uh, injured on the job and wasn't able to perform her tasks uh, pretty diligently. And so, obviously, Lily is not on the front lines here trying to save Zenith. She's kind of just, I guess, the moral support for Paul. But pretty much, the entire gang would just save Zenith. Pretty, uh, you know, that's it. Call it a day. All right, pack it up, boys. We save Zenith. And that's kind of it, right? We we get a little bit of details about what happens and how they save uh, Zenith. Uh, not the immediate effects, but how 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 do they explore this entire labyrinth? Supposedly they're in danger. Send help. There was a literal SOS message that Guy sent out. But without Rudis, they would have been fine? Well, pretty much, because Rudius went there, he does end up saving a merchant, and he allows that merchant to arrive at uh, the city of Rapan, which is where the labyrinth is, and that merchant ends up selling magic stones to a certain adventurer. However, if Rudius never ends up saving that merchant, that means that he is delayed and doesn't make it to the city on time, and therefore that adventurer doesn't end up wasting his money on the gems. And instead, he buys a map. A map of inside the labyrinth. And Geese is the one who sells it to him because Geese tries to rally up a bunch of people to help find and save Zenith. Uh, but it's just, it's not really working out. He doesn't really have the influence in the Beggared Consonant. But this other experienced adventurer he does have a lot of influence and he is able to gather a lot of people. And so he and this group of adventurers goes down into the labyrinth and they run into Paul and Paul, I guess somehow tries to convince them or he just, he doesn't try. He ends up convincing them to help save Zenith. And so them all together travel throughout the labyrinth, Talon, Roxy, Paul, Geese, all of them, plus this like mini army of adventurers just go down and explore the labyrinth. And eventually they do save Zenith. However, the catch, there's two catches. One, it takes them two whole years to save Zenith, which, uh, that's a bit of a long time. That's, I think, uh, sometime in volume 14, that is two years later as of right now in the story. And so it would have been in the middle of volume 14 when they actually finally would have returned home. But also the second catch is our goddess, Roxy. She falls in love with that same adventurer who bought the map and who led the charge to save Zenith. She falls in love. And that's bad all on its own, but also it's even worse. Because he, that Cretan, he rejects her love. He rejects the nectar of the goddess, and I just, I'm just so darn tootin' angry at that. How dare he? How dare he spit in the face of our goddess, our lordess? Anyway, yeah, I don't know, she falls in love, but she gets rejected. I mean, I just, 
I don't know that. Yeah. But to be fair, she did in the past talk about how she wanted to like meet a, a sexy adventurer. I think I'm adding sexy <laughs> in there. She wanted to meet just a regular adventurer uh, in the middle of a labyrinth. And so it's probably part of her little fantasy that she's created that she ends up falling in love with this guy anyway. But that's all on Paul's side. You know, they all save Zenith. Two years later, they're able to come home. End of story there. But what happens with Rudius? So Hizagami didn't just tell Rudius to stay behind in Sharia, but to also pick one of the two beast folk women that always follow him around and marry one of them. Lilia or Persena. You choose, it doesn't matter. And it really didn't matter because in the end, according to this future, they would have he would have just ended up marrying both of them anyway. <laughs> you would have got two for the price of one pretty much. And that's like... It's a pretty good deal. I don't know. I, you know, if, if I were, Ro if I were Rudeus, not Roxy, oh man, imagine. But if I were Rudeus, stupid elf woman, <laughs> I don't know. Sorry, Sylphie's not stupid, but anime Sylphie's kind of stupid. Book, Sylphie. She's great. Speaking of her. I don't think that she would end up sticking around. One, I, it's hard to say because she's not a follower of Millis or she might accept another wife. But also, I think it's mainly just because it's Linnea and Persena that she's like, okay, no, 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 Rudy, I'm not, I'm not dealing with this. Those two, I hate them. I beat them up once. Like, I, I gave them a bloody nose. They gave me a bloody nose. Like, we scrapped it out. Uh... Check out my episode zero skip content video for that. I'm still referencing it to this day. It's insane. Um, but she literally almost murders the two <laughs> Peace Folk women. It's insane. Probably, if I were to assume... So this... Uh, let me preface this. From here on, it's all just my imagination of the future, right? Everything that has been just, everything that I just talked about was already mentioned in the books. That's just canon. Those are the actual events, but everything here on, I'm just going to head canon my way through it. And I guess fan fiction my way through this, because I, I'm very curious about this alternate future that could have happened. Uh, and so because Rudius ends up marrying both of the Beast Folk women, again, I feel like like, Sylphie's just not going to stick around. There's no reason for her to stick around. Uh, Rudeus would definitely lose the trust of Ariel and Luke. Well, maybe not Luke. I don't know. No, definitely Luke. On one hand, Luke would be like, hey, nice choices. But also, Luke and Sylphie have very sibling-like energy. They are they are essentially siblings, not by blood. Uh, and so the fact that Rudeus betrayed what is essentially his sister, I guess technically they are cousins, though. So they are related. But, you know, he, he betrayed her. And so he probably wouldn't take too kindly to that. And so, again, neither would Ariel. Because Ariel isn't really on good terms with the Beast Folk princesses either. And so Sylphie would feel betrayed. Especially because it's those two. And so I, I could see her leaving Rudeus. And it would just be him with the two women. Which, honestly, again, not a bad future. But what would end up happening after that, right? You could definitely take this in a few different ways. Rudius could end up just, just straight up leave, right? He doesn't want to deal with the embarrassment. He's like, okay, I don't need this magic school. I, I cured my ED. I don't want to be anywhere near Sylphie. I don't want to run into her. I'm gone because Ariel can't just up and leave. Sylphie's not going to up and leave all because of this, right? And so in order to kind of stay away from Sylphie, I could definitely see Rudius leaving Sharia. But where would he go? Well, the two Beast Folk princesses, Lenny and Persena, they're going to have to head back home at some point. Maybe he'll just go to the Great Forest. And he'd probably reunite with a few people there, right? He knows a lot of the people from the Great Forest anyway, right? Guys, Gustav, the, the two, uh, I guess, the sisters of Linnea and Persena. I'm forgetting their names, but they sound similar. It's like Rinia and Liniana or something like that. It doesn't matter. But, you know, he'd be able to reconnect with a lot of them. And because he changed the village's opinion on Ghislaine, I could totally see them like going on an adventure to try and find Ghislaine and find clues throughout the whatever, you know, the central continents, exploring it all to try and find Ghislaine and Eris. I guess therefore Eris would be there as well, right? And so we'd end up searching around the central continent to find uh, Ghislaine and Eris. And in the end, well, 
if you read the books, you already know what's happening with Eris and Ghislaine. If you've seen my videos, you know what's happening. Pretty much, uh, Eris is just training at the Sword Sanctum. I won't go into details for those who don't want to know. But pretty much, the two would probably still be up there, but perhaps they're on their way down at this point. There's a chance. It's hard to say how much time will have passed. Uh, would all of this happen within the two years? Or possibly, like, Rudis is marrying and all this stuff. Would that happen over the span of two years? Or would it happen much sooner? Because uh, Rudius might leave much sooner. But even still, traveling around the central continent on its own would definitely take multiple years to do. And so at that point, uh, Eris might have left the Sword Sanctum with Ghislain. And they could have met each other around the northern part of the central continent or just deep center. It's hard to really say, but if they were to reconnect, what would happen, right? Obviously, I think that they'd all go back to the Great Forest. Ghislaine would reconnect with her family, and then Eris would be able to see the sisters again, the two little ones again, Linnea and Persena's sisters again. I don't know their names. But more importantly, of course, what would happen between Rudius and Eris? Honestly, probably very nice things. <laughs> Because Eris loves beast folk women, uh, I think women in specific, I don't know if she likes beast folk men, that's not really uh, known, but she'd probably really like Lydia and Persena for, for a lot of reasons. And But what would she think of Rudius? Obviously, I think that in this situation, everyone would come to an understanding. I think when they meet, right, I imagine it like it's Ghislain meeting Rudius for the first time, or, uh, for, you know, for the first time in years. And it would be those two meeting before Eris and Rudius reuniting. And so it would be her, Ghislaine, like, reconnecting with Lenny and Persena, because I imagine they would have been just, like, children by the time she left the village, maybe. Or maybe they wouldn't have even been born at this point. I don't know how old Ghislaine is. She almost looks like she's in her 40s or something. I don't know. I've been slurring my words a lot today. I'm tired. But I feel like she would be able to, like, kind of break the misunderstanding that's been happening. And it's like, ah, oh, Rudius, it's been so long. Eris cannot stop thinking about you. It's like, it's insane. I, she's, she's like, she's right over there. I can't wait for you two to reunite. And it's like, I, uh, I'm just so happy that you're actually here. You're well, you, you've grown. You're a, you're a man now. It's insane. A man with with two beautiful beast folk women there as well. C congratulations. It's like, under normal circumstances, I feel like Eris would want you all to herself. But considering it's those two, I don't know. Maybe uh, you could, uh, you know, maybe you can work something out. And Rudius would be like, what are you talking? I thought Eris hated me. It's like, oh God, no, she is obsessed with you. <laughs> no, what do you mean hate? Nuh uh Her obsession has only been growing throughout the years. And so they would reunite and... Definitely very hot passion would probably ensue uh, right away. But again, I feel like that heiress would kind of accept being the third wife of Rudius just because, again, Sylphie would leave Rudius because it's Sylphie, uh, because it's Linny and Persena. But I feel like Eris would want to be his third wife because it's Linnea and Persena. It's two beast folk women and Rudius. What more could you ever ask for? <laughs> And at that point, where would they go? It's kind of hard to say. I feel like Eris would still want to go around adventuring all over the place. I don't know if the two princesses would be too into that. But at the same time, they kind of seem feisty. But also at the same time, they're kind of bound by their rules of the village. And so definitely after they're reuniting, they would definitely go back to the Great Forest and just kind of hang out and talk and whatever, probably for a few months to even a year or something. Uh, Ghislaine talking about all of her stories about Rudius, and Rudius would talk about his stories, uh, although I guess the, the the village already knows much of those stories, but Ghislaine might not. And so it would kind of just be good times all around, but what would happen after that? It's kind of hard to say. Would Rudius and Sylphie ever make up? I, I don't know. I kind of doubt it. Would Roxy be involved at all? Would he ever, like, reunite with Roxy? Again, possibly not. There's a decent chance that he wouldn't. These are just all my own personal headcanons, like, uh, so I don't, I'm, I'm probably wrong on a lot of this because there are uh, people who have discussed this before on online forums of like, what would have happened if Rudius actually stayed. Uh, and I'm sure that there are like, correct answers to this. Uh, but I don't know, this is just the stuff that I, I've been thinking of, like, recently. It's like, well, what if, you know, I, I feel like Ghislaine would definitely be involved and Eris and all that, right? They would all reunite and then it'd be Rudius with three beautiful, busty women. <laughs> 
what more could you ask for? <laughs> Unless you're not into that kind of stuff, then I guess you might be asking for Roxy and Sylphie, and at that point, well, sucks for you, I guess, if you don't like that alternate future. <laughs> And then from there, it's kind of hard to predict where the series would take place and transpire and like what would happen after that, especially as well, because I can't really get into too much spoilers for the anime fans out here, because uh, this isn't a spoiler video. But uh, if you wanted to see me do a part two of this, you know, have my thoughts a little bit more organized, I'm very tired, I'm not used to speaking like this, it's been half a year, uh, but I just wanted to talk about this because I thought that it would be a fun little discussion, especially with Turning Point 3, like it just happened and we're having a delay of the next episode because if you know the reason for the delay it's uh it's kind of sad <laughs> bind is just trying to like just torture us so much and i'll definitely talk about that when the time comes but uh yeah for the most part that's it for the video i hope you enjoyed it i am i rambled a lot and i i'm again i'm not used to speaking like this it's been half a year but let me know what you think could have happened in this alternate future uh, would rudius actually end up with both of the wives i know that's something that hitogami said but he's been a little misleading in the past and do you think that Eris would actually join them and would Sylphie leave or do you think that she'd actually end up staying i don't know there's so many different possibilities here i don't know um but What's been going on, right? Just a, to, a quick little summary. Uh, where is the skip content videos? They're not going to happen. They're just, I, I think I'm done with that. It's too much. I don't have the time, first of all, to really get into all of that stuff because I'd have to read the books and I'd have to like write notes and have like, what, 20 to 30 page documents and then I have to go through that and it's like... There's just too much stuff going on with those series, and in the end, I only get a couple hundred views. A video like this where I have an idea and I kind of just talk, write some notes down and talk, it's a lot better for me right now. I don't know if it's enjoyable for you guys. Again, I'm tired. I haven't spoke like this in a while. I'm sure that I was rambling and slurring a lot. I don't know why, and I'm sorry, but videos like these are a bit easier for me to make, uh, and especially if it doesn't get many views, then I wasted an hour or two of my life, not you know, multiple, like a lot, a lot of hours, because again, the skip content really takes a while and I just don't have the time. I work at a full, I've worked full time at a restaurant. Uh, I don't have time and I'm very tired. Um, but also other people do it much better than I do. Well, some do it worse. A lot of people do it worse, but some people do it just as well, if not better than me. And they all get so many more views than I do. And I, I, I worded like that because there's like the slideshow videos of just like you see an image with a little tiny paragraph description as it slides by the screen and it's like, okay, well those are just really awful videos. Why do they get hundreds of, th hundreds of thousands of views? But then you have people like Otaku Spirit, which he quite literally does exactly what I do when it comes to the skip content. And I, I think that he might even do it better than I do. And so go check out him if you want stuff similar to my videos, but probably just it's a little bit better, let's be real. <laughs> and he's able to, like, the turnaround is insane. The episode comes out, and just a couple hours later, he has the video out. There's no way he didn't pre-record it. I think he is just summarizing the, the web novel somehow. I don't, I don't know how he does it. But he somehow was able to get it out just a couple hours after the episode airs. I, I don't get it. But, anyway, I don't know if I'm going to be back full-time. I'm going to be posting a few videos over the next few weeks. Uh, but we'll see. I'm going to limit it to maybe once a week, if that. It's just, I know the on and off is very annoying for you guys, I'm sure, even though I, I act as though I matter, but I probably don't. So a lot of you are like, oh, hey, this guy's back. Cool. And I, I didn't really miss him before, but he's back. Let's, that, that's pretty cool. And so I'm sorry for the whole on and off stuff. That's kind of always what I've done with YouTube. Uh, I've taken like, I guess, hiatuses. I'm very much like Hunter Hunter, if you think about it. <laughs> um, but... Yeah, for now, it's uh, I'm going to be posting for the next, uh, at least until the season ends, and we'll see what happens from there if I'm motivated to continue because it's, you know, I, I don't know. I'm just busy. And so I hope you did enjoy, and if you did, give it a like and subscribe for more Mishoku Tensei content, and I will see you in the next video. Goodbye.